Hey everybody, what's up? Sir Venom IK coming to you right now. Today on the show, or today on this video, this video right here, I'm going to show you how to set up and get mining relatively quickly. Let's get to it. Yes, that's right. Uh, you know, as I've as I'm growing in my mining my mining capabilities, uh, I, I tend to uh, have these people come into my channel now that I'm I'm streaming a little bit of crypto, uh, streaming some trading part, uh, trading opportunities that I've found in the actual market or with with a couple of different platforms. Uh, people keep asking me, is mining profitable? I'm going to say yes. At currently, at this juncture, as of uh, January twentieth, twenty. 2021 uh, mining is very profitable now is that going to take place in 2022 2023 i don't know we don't know we don't know what's happening right now with eth 2.0 and the and the, you know this uh, all these other things that are going on in crypto but currently at this juncture january 20th 2021 mining is very profitable so so but venom i've got my card and i've got my gaming rig do i need a rig like this do I need a rig like this to be profitable? No, you can make money from your card right now in that rig that you got. In that rig that you got right now, depending on what graphics card you have, if it's six six gigabytes and higher, should be able to make a little bit of profits. Should be able to make a little bit of money. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way that I've found to get started as I've gotten started back in September of 2020. It's when I started mining, so not very long ago. And this is what I used. I used a program called NiceHash, NiceHash.com. It is probably one of the most easiest setups I've ever done. And we're going to show you how to do it. And we're going to walk you through it very quickly. So uh, let's get into it. All right, boys, we are on my desktop. And this is the first thing that I want you guys to do. So to get into the NiceHash program, there's going to be a few steps. And we're, we're just going to take them one at a time. And we're going to work through it so you guys can pause the video. If you'll miss something, pause the video, rewind it just a little bit, and go back and watch it again. All right, boys, so the first thing I need you to do, this is what I want you to do first. I want you to right-click on your desktop. And we're going to go, you're going to create a new folder. And from here, call it whatever you want to. Call it mining, mining, whatever. As you can see, I've already got a new folder here already called mining. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing in it. So once you create that folder, what I want you to do is I want you to bring up your taskbar and I want you to right click the Windows Security tab. All right. I want you to open up the Windows Security. Okay. Once you open up that Windows Security, I need you to hit Virus and Threat Protection. Boom. Once you're here on this screen, scroll down and go to Virus and Threat Protection Settings. Click on Manage Settings right here. This little thing, this little this little button right here, Manage Settings. From here, you have a you have a couple of options. You can turn real time protection off. I don't recommend that. But what we're going to do is we're going to create an exemption. All right. So we're going to create an exclusion here. Add or remove exclusions. At this point in time, you need to click. Click the add an exclusion, go to folder, and then I want you to find that new desktop folder that we have here, and we're going to call it mining. We're going to take this mining tab, and we're going to create an exclusion. Select that folder, and it's going to it's going to prompt you. It's going to prompt you uh, as an administrator. Yes, you really want to do this. All right. So from there, you're ready to go to the internet. Okay. Uh, from the internet, you're going to type in. NiceHash.com, pretty simple program, pretty simple thing. Now I've already have an account, uh, but I'm going to take you to the base and show you a couple of things here. All right, so here's here's the base. Here's NiceHash.com. What you need to do is you need to sign in and create an account. Once you're done creating this account, come back to the video. All right, boys. So after you verify your email address. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to type in nicehash.com slash my dashboard. Then I want you to log in with your dashboard. Uh, at this at this point in time, you're going to see something similar to this. Uh, don't worry about what's on my screen. It's going to be just a little bit different than what your screen is, depending on the time of year that uh, that you're actually watching this watching this video. From here, I want you to click up into the top right corner where your little where your little uh, where your little name name bubble is and I want you to go to my settings I want you to click on my settings it's right here under your name it's not in here it's underneath your name right there my settings 
From here, you can name your profile, a public profile, anything that anybody's going to see. You can put a picture there or fill out any of this information that you want. Uh, from there, I want you to go to account settings. It's this, this little bad guy right here, this little bad guy right here, account settings. And on this page, on the account settings page, this is where you need to make your first changes. Okay, uh, now it comes up as euros. Uh, so if you are if you are in America or if you're in Canada, you need to type in just type in CAD for Canada, uh, USD uh, for US dollar, or if you guys are in a different country, type in your local currency tag, uh, and that you'll be able to see this wallet right up here in the top right corner. If I type it in CAD, boom it's going to change it over into Canadian dollars once I hit save changes. CA-104, if I type in USD, boom, 82 cents. All right, so there we go. Once we have that done, you're going to see four options here. Cryptocurrency exchange, if you're in, if you're in, if you're in the USA, this is not available to you, so don't even worry about it. Uh, cryptocurrency wallet should automatically be there for you. Also, I want you to click this bubble. This is the most important bubble that you can click in your life. Click on cryptocurrency mining. Once you hit once you hit your save changes, I want you to swap down to the security tab. Okay, I want you to swap down to the security tab, right here underneath account settings, right there, in that little guy right there, and I want you to enable your two-factor authentication. Now, this is very important that you enable two-factor authentication, uh, simply for the fact that you're going to be able to send money out of your wallet, out of your crypto wallet into whatever wallet you want to send it to. I personally recommend Coinbase because the transfer fees from your wallet, from this mining wallet to that Coinbase wallet is absolutely free. And from there you can attach your bank. I would not attach my bank to this to this to this to this platform at all whatsoever. I'm going with a trusted site which is Coinbase. Um, or your particular uh, exchange or whatever you want to do. It's your money. But I recommend Coinbase here for this. All right, so once you set up your two-factor authentication, what I need you to do is over here on the right-hand side, I want you to click on Dashboard. All right, once Dashboard shows up, there's going to be, you, you might have to reload. You might have to reload to get this mining tab, all right? So if you see this mining tab right up here in this little box right here, up here next to the little smiley face, next to Dashboard, click on the mining tab. From here, what I want you to do is I want you to click on download the miner. At this point in time, you're now ready to download the mining program. Boom, click on it. Then we're gonna, um, this is NiceHashOS. NiceHashOS is a Linux base that you will throw on a little flash drive and plug in to say, an, uh, to say a miner just like this, okay? Uh, but you're going to use your computer and Windows to mine. So we want you to do use NiceHashMiner. All right, so from here, once we click on NiceHashMiner, uh, you're going to see important important information. Many antivirus programs can interfere with proper operations of the nice hash miner if you're running a Windows operating system on your mining rig. We've already taken care of this with your exclusion that you've already done in that new folder. So just hit the check mark, you understand, and then I want you to down, hit click this button, go to GitHub. Okay, from the GitHub, I want you to download this version right here. Download nice hash miner 3.05.6 zip package okay this is very important that you get the zip package so let's go ahead and download this zip. all right boys so once you get it downloaded here uh click on the bottom tab if you're using a chrome or brave browser or something along those lines i need you to click show in the folder and then we're going to right click this it'll come up nhm nice hash minor windows 3.0.5.6 okay so from here i want you to right click this and i want you to click extract all and we're going to extract all to that folder. So I want you to click on when when this when this uh, extract compressed zip folder destination comes up. I want you to click on your browse, and I want you to go to your desktop, and then I want you to click on the mining tab, that new folder that we just created, and I want you to click select folder, and then finish. So from here, I just want you to click the little smiley face, double click this, get it open, read through the terms of service, read what the third party third third party disclaimer is, and hit accept. Then you set it up, English. All right, so from here you have an option, okay? You can go, you can go to your phone and you can download NiceHash Mining App. 
It's in it's in it's in Apple and it's on iOS. So you guys will be able to do this and you can scan this you can scan this code and and get your rig attached to your phone so you can control it from your phone. It's a very nice thing. I highly recommend it, but for our purposes here, we're just going to log in. All right, boys. So once you lock in, you're going to see this little this little thing that we got going on here. This is the desktop. This is the dashboard of your actual miner. Uh, you can you can mess around with this device's plugins, benchmarks. Uh, make sure that if you first thing I want you to do is go to devices and make sure that you have your graphics card and your CPU available on this list. If it's not, then something's wrong with your graphics card. Or if you have a double graphics card and it's not reading one of them, uh, you need to fix that before you come back to this come back to this part. But if you have one or two graphics cards on this thing or three graphics cards or however many you got on the windows, uh, make sure that it's all populated here in this list. All right, after that, uh, click on the little cogwheel. It will give you your wallet address. This is a public wallet address. Nobody can hack it unless they get your passwords. Uh, so you should be okay. Uh, you can name it whatever. We're going to name it Gaming Rig. Uh, actually, let's name it uh, Money Bling Bling. There you go. We're going to name it Bling Bling. Okay. You can change the main time of day unit to hour, weekly, month, monthly, or year. Uh, day, hour, day, week, month, or a year. Uh, I usually keep it on day so I know how much I'm making a day. Uh, as opposed to this, um, you can put in your cost of your kilowatt hours. I never, I never messed with this. The first, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to click on service location. Okay. This is the next important thing. Service location, wherever you are in the world, there is one, two, three, four, five, six servers around the world that you can, that you can mine to. For me, I'm closest to San Jose and I assume, uh, you know, just pick the one that's closest to you. Okay. Guys, once you pick the. Once you pick the service location, uh, if you guys, if this is bothering your eyes, just click on the dark theme right there and hit OK, and it will turn it off and restart it. All right, boys. So once you, once you get it restarted after turning it into turning it into dark mode, which is I, one I prefer, it's easier on my eyes and it's very 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 easy on the eyes. That's the important thing. All right. So the next thing I need you to do is I need you to click on the plugins tab right here. Click on the plugins tab. And as you can see, we have some, let's make this just a little bit bigger here so you guys can see it uh, just a little bit easier. As you can see, we do have a couple of updates and a couple of installs. So what I want you to do is I want you to install every one of these on to your rig and it will do it slowly. All right. So once you update all of these, I want you to be aware that some of these will not work for you. Not compatible with my hardware. Don't worry about it not compatible. None of this stuff is compatible with my hardware. And that is fine because you have all of these other miners you've just installed that you're going to be able to mine on. From there, I want you to click on your device tab. All right. So now I want to right here, we have two options. We have your CPU and we have your GPU. You might have more options based on based on what GPU, how many GPUs you have, but right now we're only going to go with this. First thing I want you to do is go to this, go to your processor, and I want you to click this little bobble. Don't worry about it. We're going to come back to this in a minute, but I will, it's very important that you click this bobble off now. At this point in time, I want to take you into MSI Afterburner. Uh, if you guys don't have MSI Afterburner, go to MSI, type it, Google MSI Afterburner, and download MSI. Uh, download this program here because this is what you're going to use to control your fan speeds, which are which are crucial, and your overclocks. So we'll do a real quick setup on on Afterburner here, and then we'll get back into the rest of the miner. All right, as this video is going longer than I had anticipated, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to click on this, take your little mouse and click on this little cogwheel right here. From the cog wheel, I want you to click on, it'll show Afterburner Properties, go to the Fan Control, it's the second tab, and click this little box. When you first when you first ever load up MSI Afterburner, you're going to click on this box right here. It will be blank, you click on it. At this point in time, this is, this is user controlled, uh, user defined fan speeds and the ramping up of that you want Personally, you can you can do it automatically. I personally recommend to do this manually because you can get exactly what you want. 
The numbers on the bottom are the temperature, how hot your GPU gets, and the numbers on the left side are how fast your fan speeds at those temperature. So I set my little idle at 30%, 40, uh, you know, 30 degrees, 40% 40 fan speed, and I set a pretty aggressive fan curve when it comes up here. Once my once my GPU hits 35, I'm, I'm ramping up to 50% fan speed right away just to try to keep it cool as long as possible. Uh, here at, uh, at about 55 to 60 degrees, I'm getting a 70% fan curve. And then if for some reason, for some reason my fans, my fans aren't running, uh, some reason my card's getting extremely hot, I'm gonna ramp it up at about 70 degrees. Now, temperature wise, you're gonna be okay anywhere up from, from 60 degrees, 40 degrees, whatever your fan is, all, or uh, whatever your temperature on your graphics card is all the way up to about 80 degrees. Once it starts hitting up to 80 degrees, then you need to start worrying about, okay, this thing is a little bit too hot. It will still run, uh, but 90 degrees, you gotta, you gotta be very wary because it will shut down, uh, throttle your mega hash, right? So, all right, so once you have this, I want you to click apply. I want you to hit okay. All right, so the next thing after we get our fan curves done is we need to do our overclocking profile. Now, I'm not going to show you how to overclock. Uh, I will make a recommendation on overclocks, but the first thing you need to do is click on this little save tab right here, and I want you to hit number one and number two. Okay, I want you to, if you have to hit the second one twice, so, so hit the save file, click number one, hit the save file, hit number two. All right, so from here, what I've done is you now have created two profiles. The first profile, you're going to leave blank. Just leave it blank. Don't ever touch it or don't mess with it unless you're going to overclock for your games. Then if you're going to overclock for your games, click a number three tip. Uh, other than that, I usually leave my number one as stock settings. So as soon as out of the box, as soon as you fire it up, if you're on team green, all of these things, the, uh, the clock, core clock and the memory clock will be at zero. And I just leave them there. This is your baseline, right? So from there, hit number two, and then do your overclocks here. I have a recommendation for overclocks. I'm not going to tell you how to do it because each card is different, and you have to fine-tune it on your own. Jump up about 100. Jump up about 150. If it, if it works, then it works. If it doesn't work, then just bring it back. Bring it back just a little bit and until it does actually work and give you the performance that you're looking for. Once you're done with that, make sure you hit your check marks after every time. So if you want to enter this here, we'll go 1400. We must hit enter. We must hit enter. And then we hit the check mark to apply the overclock. That's it. That's all I'm going to tell you. Other than that, if you're on your own here, you're on your own here, but just understand that when you overclock your hardware, uh, it will shut down. It will shut down if it's a bad clock. It will not bust your thing. It will not bust your card overclocking, right? But it will shut it down to where you have to revert to a previous state by hitting by hitting your default tab. Boom. There you go. All right. So there you go. So once we have this up and running, I want you to go back to the nice hash miner. All right, boys. So we got everything set up here, right? We've got everything. You're ready to start mining, right? Almost, almost ready to start mining. You've turned off your, your, your CPU processor. Go to the benchmark tab now. This is, where, this is where you are going to benchmark each of those miners that you downloaded previously. What I want you to do is I want you to, you see the CPU miner. CPU does have an ability to mine, but right now we're not gonna touch on this. We're gonna come back to it after this, after we get this one, after we get the graphics card up and running. So we want to open up this tab here. Just click on it. All you have to do is click on it. You can click on here, the little arrow. You can click on anywhere in this box to get this thing to expand. All right. Well, what the hell is Kukuru? What's Kuko Cycle? What's Beam? What's Dagger Hashimoto? What's all this? What are we doing here? Okay. So these are the different algorithms that you're going to be running. Uh, this is the algorithm at Dagger Hashimoto. And this is the minor program that you're going to be running it on. So Dagger Hashimoto Law Miner. All right, fair enough. Clear as mud, and you can do the, you can do your own research into these and which one, what coin does what. Uh, just to understand Dagger Hashimoto's Ethereum this is probably going to be the most profitable for most of you guys, unless you're running like a 2070 or 2080, where well, I believe Octopus is, and that I believe that's a Conflux uh, Conflux coin. All right, so that's the explanation on what's happening here on this page. What I want you to do is I want you to go into benchmark type. It's right underneath, right up under here, right here. I'm shaking the, shaking the little arrow at it right here. 
benchmark type standard. Now there's three types of benchmarks that you can do. You can do a standard one, which will give you pretty close to accurate, uh, but it does take a little bit of time. Then you have a quick one, can be inaccurate, but it is very quick to run through some of these benchmarks, or you can do a precise tap. My recommendation is to do the very first benchmark as a quick benchmark. And there's a reason why, and I'll explain it after this. Okay, so you got your, you got your MSI afterburner on. You don't have any overclocks on this, and we're going to benchmark this as stock settings. So once you, once you have quick, and it's going to take you a minute, so get up and go get you a drink. This thing is going to take you. This thing is going to take you a minute to get this uh, benchmark. So get up, and go relax, go t go t go take a break for just a couple of minutes, and come back and see where you're at. So let's start benchmarking. All right, boys, here we go. Let's go to our benchmark tab. We have finished our benchmarks as of right now. Okay. Uh, once you finish your little, once you finish your little benchmark. You're going to receive a little window. A window's going to pop up. Don't worry about that. That is the actual miner. We're going to go into a little bit more details of what that miner is here in just a second. <clears throat> All right. So as you can see, my number one profitability is Beam V3 currently. Now, uh, please note the disclaimer here. I am on an RX 580, and it does have two different modes of, of usage. One, it has a graphics mode. Another, it has a compute mode. For me to record this video, I needed to be in graphics mode to show you. So my profitability levels are lower. If you switch it over to compute mode, if you have an RX 580, uh, you will get better mega hash in compute mode. I get about 28, uh, 24 to 28 mega hash in compute mode through Windows. Now, if you're like me, you're not going to want a BIOS module bios mod your card because i'm not putting this on that rig over there if you bios mod your card that's the only thing that you can do on it and but if you're like me and you want to play games and when you're at work or you go to sleep you want to start mining on it then you would switch this over to compute mode and you would get better performance so just just understand that 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 is why my performance and my profits are low right now all right boys so you finished benchmarking your tab you benchmarked it all, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to sort. I want you to sort through your benchmarks. I want you to get the ones that are most profitable at the very, very top, okay? As you can see, we have the ones that are most profitable. Now I want you to switch it to where the least profitable are at the at the top, okay? From here, you could start turning off miners that are not working with your system. There's an error during the benchmark, or it's a really low profitability. This Lyra Wild Rig here only. 0. 0.000016 uh, Satoshi. That's not profitable at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this little dongle and we're just going to flat out turn them off. And you can turn them off all the way, all the way up until you have about four or five algorithms left. And you can do it either either direction. You can do it from the top or the bottom. We're going to turn it off until where there's only only a few algorithms left. Uh, I recommend that if you are on a team green card, you leave at least one of the dagger Hashimoto's on because as Ethereum's price fluctuates and the uh, uh, the gas fees go up and down with Ethereum, so does the profitability. So you'll be mining at 1700 or uh, 1777 mega hash or. or Bitcoin, and then it will jump up to like a 11,000 Bitcoin, uh, 11,000 Satoshi of Bitcoin to where you are uh, receiving those extra gas fees and you get those extra profits. So I at least, leave at least one Dagger Hashimoto on uh, if you if you are mining on a Team Green. All right, so uh, let's just turn off some more. Grin Kokoro, I don't care about that. Octopus is not not very good on my card. Another another Grin Kokoro, and but we'll just leave those four on, okay? All right, now you are ready to mine. Okay, uh, from here, you uh, you click on fuck three, two, one. All right, boys. So you 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 probably saw this a little box pop up for you. What I want you to do is I want you to go over to the dashboard and I want you to hit the pause button. Now that's very important that you hit the pause button for this because then you can make changes to your system. Okay. Once you hit the pause button, go back to your benchmark tab, okay? And I want you to sort via the uh, 
24 hour button and I want you to pull the one that is the most profitable to the very top and it will do it this way okay now the way nice hash works is you are mining on ethereum okay you're mining dagger hashimoto is an ethereum coin you're mining with the phoenix miner and this is the speeds that you're going to get obviously the more mega hash that you get the more profitable you're going to be the way nice hash works is since you are mining ethereum it automatically transfers those that amount of Ethereum that you're making and gives you the Bitcoin value of those coins. This is how you get paid out, right? You're getting paid out in Bitcoin. So you can hold that, do whatever you want to with it. So we sorted through the most profitable through Bitcoin. How much Bitcoin are we going to make? We're going to make one, two, three, four, uh, 1,433 Satoshi of bitcoin per 24 hours what does that translate to not very much because again i am on gaming mode here and it's more through compute mode uh, we've sorted through it and as you can see i've gone ahead and disabled a lot of these the ones that erred or they will have zero satoshi those aren't profitable or they've erred out you can turn them off you can click this little dongle and turn them off this little lyra 16 satoshi that ain't profitable that ain't worth your time so turn off the ones that are that aren't profitable and leave yourself about three or four of them uh, if you are on team green i recommend leaving um at least one dagger hashimoto one maybe it's the best for you but i know there's some cards out there that octopus or conflux is a better mining coin for you but it will take the one that's most profitable and throw it up there. Let's take this for an example. Let's say you're a 2080 and you are mining on Octopus and Octopus is giving you 7,000 Satoshi. Well, the way that Ethereum works and those gas fees, this thing will jump up to a 10,000 Satoshi and will overtake that Octopus miner. Then it will automatically, the, your program will automatically switch to one coin that is the most profitable. It can get easy for you to just turn it on and forget about it. All right, so I'm going to show you something now. If you want to re-benchmark these in a future in a future tense, you can click on uh, click on standard or precise to get you a more accurate representation of what the profits you're going to make. Click on this little cogwheel, and then cogwheel at the very end, right over here, right over here, cogwheel at the very end, and then just forget about all this stuff here. And use and just click this little dongle that says scheduled for rebenchmarking. Once you start this, once you start this, once you click that, it, it will allow you to rebenchmark this, and you can do it at whatever type you want. So from here, we're going to close this, and we're going to we're going to activate our CPU. At this point in time, you're going to benchmark your CPU. Now, if you have a Ryzen chip, you're going to earn a little bit more on on this, but you will be mining Monero. Uh, one disclaimer here is that if you're going to do anything on your computer, I want you to turn off, I want you to turn, go to the devices and flip the dongle off on the processor. Do not mine and try to work on your computer. It's not going to mess it up, but it's going to, the performance is going to be so bad that you will be like, oh my God, something's wrong with my computer. It's this damn miner. What is going on? So just turn it off. If you're going to do anything, you can continue to watch videos. You can continue to surf the web. Uh, I don't recommend playing games uh, while your, while your graphics card is running. So if you're just sitting there and you're doing some light work, you can mine on this graphics card while you're doing that light work. Now, if you're going to go to sleep or you're going to leave the house for several hours, flip this thing back on, turn your mining rig, turn this thing on, and you're going to get maybe 20 cents extra, but it just adds to the total. So there you go, boys. You're mining. You're mining, boys. What else is there? Oh, but there's just a little bit more that you guys need to understand. All right, so from here, we've got you mining. Okay, you got the windows open. You've turned off your deal because you're still watching this video, but you are mining actively. Okay, you are making money. Now, where does this go? Well, if you go back to the nicehash.com and you go to your dashboard, it'll show you you have an active rig and one inactive rig. Well, as of right now, I'm not going to be mining because I would have, I would mess up the performance while I'm trying to do this. But either way. So you have an active rig and you have an inactive rig. You can start all of your rigs from here, start them mining, or you can stop them all right here, right here. You can click on go to rig manager. Now this page you can also get to from just clicking on the mining tab right here and then rig manager. 
This shows your rigs. This shows what rig, what you named it. It shows your processor, uh, processor here and the graphics card. Now you can have multiple rigs. You can have many rigs and it'll show up each graphics card that is on this particular rig. And you can turn one graphics card on, one, one graphics card off. If one graphics card is giving you trouble and you're away from the house, you can pull up your phone and you can do that as well. well let's go ahead and look at what our profits and stuff are going to be. Uh, I'm gonna leave this off actual profitability per 24 hours you click this to local it'll be a little bit more accurate representation of what's going on on your neck of the woods instead of what you're actually getting uh the local one is a better uh, it is a better representation just trust me trust me on this it's a better representation of what you're actually getting because they could they could differ between the two of them and especially uh, if you have multiple rigs running, there could be some some confusion. Well, I'm supposed to be getting this payout, but I'm not getting this payout because you're tracking it. It all fluctuates with the price of the coins, uh, the price of Bitcoin, the price of Ethereum. Okay. All right. So from here, then this is your unpaid mining balance. When every four hours you will get a payout, not payout to your wallet, but payout to your nice hash wallet. Okay. Uh, you will receive however many cents it is, you know, for per hour. 50 cents 60 cents whatever payouts uh, we can look into some of my previous payouts where i was getting 48 cents every four hours 36 cents every four hours uh 63 cents 78 cents 87 cents that was every four hours to receive a payment you must mine at least 1000 satoshi to get a payout in those four hours okay if not then it'll keep accruing until you hit that 1000 payout or that 1000 satoshi and then here you can see your total Bitcoin wallet balance. As you can see, mine is 2200 Satoshi. And at current prices, it's worth about 82 cents at 2200 Satoshi. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, from here, we want to click on the wallet tab. Now, the wallet tab is going to, don't worry about these available currencies. You're not going to mess with any of this. Uh, all you want to do is mine and get your Bitcoin and get off of this program. All right. Now, how do you get your money out of this program? What I want you to do is I want you to come over to the wallet tab and I want you to hit withdraw. From here, if you have a Coinbase account, this is what I recommend, a Coinbase account, uh, go set one up now, set up the two-factor authentication, get everything verified, and then come back to the video. All right, boys, so you've come back, to, you come back, you set up your Coinbase account, and now I want you to do is this will, this will, this is your with this is your Bitcoin wallet, however much you have here, and you withdraw it to you want to click on this tab and I want you to click connect your Coinbase account. Follow the instructions that pop up on screen. All right. There you go. Now, all right, boys, so uh, here we go. Minimum amounts. We don't have a uh, we have minimum amount withdrawal. They've actually lowered this. Uh, it used to be 0 0.001 Bitcoin. Now it's 0 0.0005 Bitcoin. So you can get payouts even faster now with NiceHash.com. So we can use our max here. It says we don't have uh, we don't have enough to get a payout, and that's fine. That's not important. Processing time is up to 24 hours. If you send it to Coinbase, it's relatively quick. I think the longest one that it took me uh, was maybe maybe 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, it, it's very, very quick. Um, and then you just hit, if you withdraw, you'll put in your two-factor authentication. Boom, you got your payout over on Coinbase. And now you're, it's free to do with what you want to. And now you're gonna start mining into another payout. Now, based on how many cards you have, your payouts are gonna be a lot faster. Uh, but there you go, boys. And it was a little bit of a long video and I apologize for the length of the video, but it is very in-depth. Uh, that things that you have to do in a very good, um, a very good uh, representation of how to get mining and very easily, and you can be making money while you're at work on your graphics card. Uh, if you for, if you leave, you go to work, and you be like, oh shit, it's lunchtime. I have a, I don't I need to run home and turn my miner on. No, my friend, because you've already downloaded the phone app and you're able to turn your miner on. Just leave your computer on, leave your computer running, uh, and turn. Turn it on, boys. Turn it on from your phone. Well, that's all I got for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for struggling through this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If y'all are having any problems, just stop and go back. If y'all missed anything, go back to the videos. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, if if you're having problems with anything that has to do with the nice hash miner, I cannot troubleshoot everybody's stuff. 
Go to the support page, uh, you know, look it up because it's a very good program. It's very easy to use. Uh, so that's it. That's all I got for you. I love you. Thank you for watching. I am Sir Venom IK. Salute to my friends. We'll see you guys next time.